Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you the differences between Microsoft Project and Microsoft Excel. So you're probably aware if you're a Microsoft Project user that the number one competitor to Microsoft Project is actually Microsoft Excel. So the tool of choice for most project managers is always Excel, always has been, probably always will be, right? It's easy, you can get the things what you want in there, dates, etc. I'm going to show you kind of the differences between the two and when you should really think to transition over to Microsoft Project and how easy it is to do so. So, you know, in Excel, you can have a bunch of tasks that you've got going on. So my project A, right, and then task A, task B, task C, task B, right? And then, you know, phase one complete. Right. So there you go. And obviously you've got to adjust your columns as necessary. You have to give everything a, pro a, a heading, right? So we don't know. Oh, I need to insert a new column here, right? I'm going to call this one, you know, task name. Maybe we'll make that bold, right? So you can see this is some work I have to do to get my project schedule set up here in Microsoft Project. And then obviously the next thing we want is probably start date. We'll just start, finish. And then duration, and you can say, yeah, my, you know, pro, yeah, the start date of task A probably get that one started on five ten, and then uh, this one probably five fifteen. A few days later, right now I don't know if that's a weekend or anything. I can't really pull up a calendar. It's difficult to do so, right? Five uh, seventeen, etc. Right. And then I'll probably know that my phase one is going to be done. Oh, how long is this one going to take? Uh, well, that one should be finished on 5.23. And then this one should start on 5.27. And for most of you, you probably put in some cool little formulas in here, right? So you're saying, right, so this one, uh, this cell can equal the finish date of this one, right? So I could say equals that, right? And then this one, this cell could equal this date plus five days, right? And you can put some really cool formulas in here, three, four, five days, right? And you can use formulas to calculate dates out for you. It's a lot of work to do all that though, as I'm sure you'll agree, right? So what we can do is use Microsoft Project instead and it will manage all of those things, right? Also, if things change, if dates change in here, if I update the date here from 5.17, to 518, nothing changes, right? Unless I've got these formulas that I have to build out from scratch. Let's do the exact same thing. And in fact, I'm going to show you how you can just take some of these fields here, start date, finish dates that you have, copy them, put them straight into Microsoft Project. Now, this is out of the box Microsoft Project, haven't touched a thing, right? So, right away, task name, the heading's already there, the duration, start, finish. You can see in here I had task name start finish so probably I just want to put in the task names I can even hide this duration column for now paste that in boom there we go record all my dates nice thing is it's managing these things for us we know the task name also we've got all these other columns that we could do oh it's building out a Gantt chart for us by default I can now if I want put in my duration column I deleted it now it's back and it's calculating these things for us as opposed to us having to manually put in a formula or anything like that, right? So if I say that this one starts on this date and it goes on for three days, boom, it's calculating the finish date. Again, if I say this one's three days, now if these dates change, right now we're in manual mode. So if I say this one's actually gonna push out a couple of extra days a week later, oh, sorry, I did a wrong date there, a couple of weeks, we now it's gonna be 10 days. Nothing else is affected. I don't want it to change my task C or anything like that. You can see on the timeline how things are changing. And you can down the line, you can say, right, B is going to be linked to C and link the two together. And now we've got a really fluid schedule. It's building out all these things for us. As things change, though, again, I increase the duration because we've got manually scheduled tasks, things aren't going to update. That's because I've turned the scheduling engine off for the most part. There's a little bit there, but it's mainly turned off. By default, Microsoft Project has what's called manually scheduled tasks. This means that the scheduling engine is switched off. You are responsible for maintaining the duration and the start and finish dates. 
you can put anything you want in here, right? Next week. And it'll allow it. It's italicized. It doesn't understand it. It's not com computing it, but it's still there. Whenever you're ready, you can turn auto scheduled on, right? And I think they created manually scheduled tasks back in 2010 to give people that incentive to move from Excel to Microsoft Project quickly and easily. Manage what you want whenever you're ready. Come in and turn the scheduling engine on. Let's not force people into doing that, right? So now if I update durations, etc., things are going to dynamically update and I can link all my tasks together quickly and easily. And the thing that Microsoft Project does that Excel does not without a lot of work from a, you know, a, a formula standpoint, it gives you dates, right? You can plan things out. How long do things, things are going to be? You can change the project start date. If so, things happen outside of the control of the project, right? Let's say we were planning on getting started on the 6th, but now it's going to be the 20th. Boom, everything's updated. You don't have to go in and manually flex the numbers, right? It's going to be easy, quick and easy to do that. And as things change, durations push, you come back in, the schedule is going to be fluid and Microsoft Project is going to be quickly able to provide us with new dates. That's kind of a quick and dirty differences between the two. You can see when you've got a nice Gantt chart and timelines and things like that, going back to Excel does look pretty drab. Now I have seen it where you can build out Gantt charts in Excel, but why? Let's use the tools that are already built, right? Let's not reinvent the wheel. Hope you enjoyed this video and please like and subscribe.